We welcome you to the pre recorded broadcast of a portion of the worship service from the First Presbyterian Church of Cheyenne, Wyoming, where visitors are always welcome. First Presbyterian Church is located at 220 West 22nd Street in downtown Cheyenne. The preacher today is Reverend Diana Hartman. be with you. From Psalm 130, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love and the power to redeem. Greetings as we worship this morning, this Sunday morning, March 29th, as the body of Christ gathered in our homes, scattered across our community. I want to thank everyone who was working so hard to make these worship services available. We will send out announcements via email as well as our prayer chain. I invite you to pray for the people on our prayer chain during the week. Complying with the CDC's recommendation, our session voted to close our church building to all meetings and worship services. But let me remind you that the building is not the church. You are the church as you reach out and live in the world as the body of Christ. Our worship services are being recorded and will be available through our website, firstpreschayenne.org and as always broadcast on KRAN Radio 103.3 FM on Sundays at 8.30. We are continuing our Thursday night Bible study this Thursday beginning at 6.30 via Zoom. And as they come up, our ministries will be meeting also via Zoom. Please look for an invitation. This Sunday morning at 11 a.m., we're going to try a 45-minute virtual fellowship time. You should have received an email inviting you to be joined that meeting. If you didn't, you can join the meeting with the Zoom ID 629-673-484 that you see on your screen. In order to communicate better with you, we are sending out email and text blasts. If you have an email or cell phone and are not receiving these, let us know via our website. We want to remind you, though, that we will never contact you to send money directly to us through that email. Any money, any donations to our church should be made via the website or sent to the church via regular mail. Easter lilies can still be mailed to the church by this Wednesday. The lilies are $15 and will be distributed after Easter. Our extended table donations and our Day of Giving underwear collection will be collected upon our return to worshiping together here in the sanctuary. As we worship today, I invite you to participate at home as if you were here. Gather your family around your television or your computer. Grab a Bible to read along with the scriptures. We will leave time during the service for your responsive readings part, as part of the service. Birthdays that we have this week that we're celebrating are Hunter Dilley, Joseph Kilpatrick, Ron Williams, Patsy Dykeman, Fran Freehoff, Brent Levitt, and Mike Sutton. So happy birthday to all of you who are celebrating birthdays and happy, happy anniversary to any anniversaries there. And now, may the peace of Christ be with you. Please join me in the call to worship. The response will be, this is the feast of life and light. We have been called to the banquet. This is the feast. This, this is, is the, the feast, feast of, of life, life and, light. and light. You have been summoned to the wedding. This is the feast. This is, this is, the, is the feast, feast of, of life, life and, and light. light. From the streets and the byways, God has invited us. This is the feast. This, this is, is the, the feast, feast of life and light. We have come to the banquet that has no end. Praise be to God. 
Please join me in the prayer of praise. Holy God, you set before us every day a bounty of good things. Bring to us your feasting table, hungry for your word, eager to rebuild the cities you have made, and ready to receive strangers so that we may celebrate at all times and in all places the peace which is life in you. Amen. Place the new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in the space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now, and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your faith. We have been sung throughout all of history. Call to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty. Gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly. Give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of here you shall call your sons and your daughters, call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion, give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away. Here in this place the new light is shining, now is the kingdom and now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever, gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all people together, fire of love in our flesh and our bones. Let us come before the throne of God, the mercy seat, with all of our humanity, open to the peace of promised forgiveness. I invite you to join me in the prayer of confession that you see on your screen. You invite us to your feast, O God, and we do not come. You beg us to give thanks for life, and we fail in our thanksgiving. You have made for us a wonderful earth, and we neglect the gift. Forgive us for what we have done and for abandoning the pathways you desire for us. Be our guide and our conscience. Turn our feet and hands to your will, that all that we do might give glory to you. We invite you now for a time of silent, personal confession. Hear this assurance of pardon. The God of peace, who calls all creation to live in unity, hears our plea. 
in the spirit of feasting and thanksgiving, in the mercy of Almighty God, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. For the sake of Christ Jesus, our Savior, who died and rose from the dead to destroy the shroud of despair, rejoice. prayer for illumination. Your word, O God, is a feast all its own. Let your Holy Spirit open our minds to your call to listen, for we know your holy word heals and reconciles your people. Amen. The Old Testament lesson today is found in Isaiah chapter 25, verse 1 and verses 6 through 9. Hear the word of the Lord. O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that it cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hello, I'm Pastor Diana Hartman, and I'm so glad that you have joined with us as we worship our Lord and Savior together and in this new way. Today's scripture reading starts in the middle of the story. So to put re the reading in context, let me explain what has happened just prior to our reading. Jesus is on the road to Jerusalem. He's been invited to the house of the chief Pharisee on the Sabbath to eat a meal. Upon his arrival, he makes several observations about who has been invited and where they are seated around the table. Our reading today is the final parable Jesus shares at this banquet. While I'm reading the scripture today, I invite you to think about where you would place yourself in the story. What character do you identify with? And now from the New Testament, the Gospel of Luke, the 14th chapter, verses 15 through 24. The parable of the great banquet. One of the dinner guests, upon hearing this, said to Jesus, Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, Someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time for the dinner, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of land, and I must go out and see it. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to try them out. Please accept my regrets. 
Another said, I have just been married and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to his slave, Go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And the slave said, Sir, what you ordered has been done, and there is still room. Then the master said to the slave, Go out into the roads and lanes and compel the people to come, to come in so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who were invited will taste my dinner. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite you to gather your kids and those who are still kids at heart around your screen for the message from our Children and Youth Ministry Director, Ashley Braisted. Hi everybody, thank you for joining us for Children's Time. We have these lovely kids here today. We have Gavin and Brant joining us to help us with um, our children's sermon today. Boys, we're going to talk about Lent today okay. and what that means. Do you guys know what Lent is? Um, yes. It's preparation for Easter. Correct. Do you remember how many days? 40. Nice job, Gav. It is. What are some of the things that we do to uh, prepare ourselves for Lent? Um, we, we do Ash Wednesday. We give away some of our stuff. Okay, you might give something up. Yeah. Some people um, really focus on their faith and focus on prayer and, and just being uh, very spiritual for those 40 days, right? That's what I did last night. You did? Well, guess what our church does, too? What? What are these? Fish banks! Fish banks, our fish banks. So we're going to talk about our fish banks today and how that can help um, our church and our world through Lent and after Lent, all right? Our theme this year is taken from the 58th chapter of Isaiah, and it is, You Shall Be Called Repairs of Breach. What is a repair? Um, it's, it's fixing something like my dad's fixing my razor. Yeah. Okay, what does it mean to be breach? Um, it means, um... Mm. It means to help one another, I think. No, what it means is you have a gap and you close the gap. You seal that gap. So you're repairing it and you're closing it all at one time. Uh-huh. So, Isn't that so pretty it cool? never breaks open again. Correct. Just like since, um, once you close the crack, you never want to open it again. Correct, correct. Good job. So what are some ways that we can help with our fish banks. Um, you guys know some ways that we can help, what our money is going to help mm -hmm. with? Um, it's going to go to the um, poor. To the poor, the needy, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to help provide food. this food for people that might not have food, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else is it going to do? It's going to um, help repair. Help people. repair. What are some things that you guys can think of that okay. are tools that we use to help re um, repair things? Like hammers, oh, nails. Oh, we have a hammer, some nails. What about painting and repairing? Painting. And we have our bucket and our gloves here because those are kind of things that we, we think of when we repair things, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Painting. The last thing is, is it is also helping with self-development. There's a lot of countries uh -huh. that use seeds to plant their crops so that they can um, grow their ranches or their farms. And then they also have um, animals such as cows. What else? Um, cats, um, mm -hmm. goats. Goats, chickens. And they help um, provide... Lambs. The lambs. They help um, provide um, food for the, the yeah. people of their yeah. community, yeah, right? Yeah, like eggs. Yes. Milk. But we also are super thankful for this clean, clear water that we have, right? <laughs> There's a lot of people that don't have this, but we have it. So your your money is going to help provide all this stuff for people that don't have it. Isn't that so awesome? Yeah. And guess what is even better? 
but not only kids can help, but you, adults, can help too, and you can give. You can give on our church website under Give Now, and there is a special um, selection drop up, drop down box for one great hour of sharing. And all of you kids can keep filling these up. And on Palm Sunday, we are going to present them back to our church. Isn't that super exciting? Yeah. Yes. So you guys have a few more weeks to fill those banks to help everybody in need. All right, let's bow our head and pray, please. Loving God, be with us this season of Lent. May we be helpers and learners as we as a church seek to repair the breach. Amen. Well, life sure is different than it was a month ago. It's been a couple of weeks now for some of you who are having to shelter in place in your homes. And even if you're still going to work each day, that routine has probably been disrupted as well. We are working each day at keeping the appropriate social distancing, hand washing and sanitizing, and disinfecting surfaces. Have you adjusted? Have you found your new normal? Do you have that new routine in place? I know my work has changed. I rarely see any of you are church members in person. The new normal is holding meetings via Zoom, a program that we use through our computers to see one another. I'm grateful that we have the technology to provide this worship service via the internet, something we would not have had 30 years ago. Even so, we must keep reminding ourselves that while not physically together, we are truly connected through the blood and spirit of Christ Jesus. I found that also some things that I used to take for granted, I now appreciate more. Before the COVID-19, when I asked folks, how are you? Often the reply would be, I am so, so busy. But now for many, the pace of life has drastically slowed down. I used to go for several nights in a week without eating dinner with my family. That doesn't ha happen very often now. In fact, I imagine that some families are sitting down at the table with children and spouse for three meals a day. You can decide if that is a joy, a challenge, or both. There's one thing that I think many of us miss more than anything else, and that is being together, face to face, in community. I've seen on the news how creative people have gotten trying to reestablish a sense of community. In cities where the streets are lined with apartments, folks are coming out on their balconies and windows, playing music, dancing, singing, and greeting those around them as if it were a block party of sorts. I imagine that we may not, they may not have ever seen the person in the apartment across the street before, and now their conversations bridge the street-wide gap. Hannah's teacher is using a Microsoft meeting program to do weekly check-ins with the entire class so that they can both see and hear from one another. For many, it is the gathering of the extended family and friends for a meal that is missed. Have you seen the folks who set up their iPhone or iPad on their table during dinner and their much beloved friends do the same from their table trying to simulate a dinner party? 
Table fellowship is a very important aspect of building and maintaining relationships in most societies. In Consuming Passions, the Anthropology of Eating, the authors write, and once the anthropologist finds out where and when and with whom the food is eaten, just about everything else can be inferred about the relationships among the society's members. In all societies, both simple and complex, eating is the primary way of initiating and maintaining human relationships. To know what, where, how, when, and with whom people eat is to know the character of their society. Well, feasts and banquets were the setting of many of the stories that Jesus told. The Gospels are full of accounts of Jesus eating with friends and followers. Jesus invites himself to supper with Zacchaeus, a white-collared crook. He sends followers out two by two to the village with specific instructions to eat what is put in front of them in the homes they visit. Another dinner, he defended the actions of a woman who anointed him, who anointed him with oil. Even Jesus' closest companions on occasion expressed surprise and dismay at his inclusion of social outcasts, people with leprosy, mental illness, unclean occupations, or of a lesser status in the community, women, children, Samaritans. Often we find Jesus enjoying table fellowship celebrations. Jesus is even accused by some as being a glutton and a drunkard. And this accusation follows him everywhere. This fellow eats and drinks with sinners. It is obvious that something very important is going on around the table of Jesus. When people came together with Jesus, some amazing things happened. Strangers became friends, thousands were fed, people were healed. The usual social and economic and religious barriers that divided the up and in from the down and out didn't matter so much. In today's reading, Jesus is at, table, at the table of a person of great status in this society, the chief Pharisee. In this society, eating was seen as the most intimate and relation-building act in which one could engage. These meals provided a microcosm of the values of society. So, social ranking was replicated at meals with, gifts, gifts, with the gift, with the, excuse me, with the guest of the highest status, status being seated next to the host and receiving the best food. The host would make certain that people of varying ranks, classes, and genders would not be seated indiscriminately. In Jesus' day, the Pharisee hosting this meal would be trying to please God by observing strict rules of purity. He would have found it unthinkable to have table fellowship with sinners, a category in which he would include those less religiously scrupulous than he, people he considered immoral, like adulterers, or those engaged in unclean occupation like tax collectors and pig farmers and non-Jews. But here in the Gospel of Luke, one of the images Jesus used for the kingdom of God is the heavenly feast. Jesus describes a time when people will come from east and west and north and south and will eat in the kingdom of God. Jesus even describes the kingdom of God as a feast that includes people in unexpected ways. Indeed, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. Now, some people found Jesus' ideas very offensive, but many others gathered around Jesus, attracted by his vision. His story describes a new and different kind of community in which a person's acceptance and worth would not be based on social status, wealth, skin color, age, sex, culture, religious background, and mental or physical condition. 
The one apparent precondition to being included was accepting the invitation to be part of such an open community, something some people just could not accept. If all this sounds like just a lot of long ago fuss over Jewish table manners, think back to the start of the civil rights movement in our own country. In the early 1960s, our society was convulsed when some black young people sat down at a whites-only Woolworth lunch counter. We're told that in Nashville, youths had ketchup poured over them and lighted cigarettes snuffed out on their necks. Such was the rage over the challenge to the eating customs of the day. Here in our modern democracy, we had laws about who could eat where and with whom. When young people, black and white, sat down at the same lunch counter or rode the same bus, they were throwing down the gauntlet to the whole system in the name of an alternative vision of what society could be. This is exactly what Jesus was doing. Do you want to please God, he was asking? Don't separate yourself out but open yourself up to community with the poor and the marginal, the religious suspect, as well as your own kind. Jesus was replacing the segregated table with the inclusive table. The picture Jesus paints of God's table shows that things such as money, social status, worldly power do not impress God. What matters is that as people created in the image of God, we all come to God's table equally beloved and worthy of dignity and respect. In his words and actions, Jesus seemed to be saying that genuine peace among people and with God is only possible when all people are treated as children of God. Following Jesus' example, we can remember that all people are children of God and part of God's family. We can celebrate both the everyday events of life and times of great joy, sorrow, and meaning as gifts from God. We can find opportunities for Christian service that reflect our commitment to community without barriers. We can seek to build relationships that restore and reconcile. And most importantly, we can accept Jesus' invitation to set aside our own agendas and come as guests invited to the great banquet. Table fellowship is both a joy and a challenge. It is a joy to gather with you today, even if that gathering is through an internet connection. It is a challenge to keep that deeper connection that is ours through Jesus Christ. But I promise you that there is light at the end of this tunnel, and that light is the light of Christ guiding us through the darkness and into the light. It won't be long before we will once again enjoy gathering around our tables, in our homes, restaurants, at church potlucks, and here in our sanctuary with family, friends, and perhaps even some guests who will become friends. In the meantime, continue to find those creative ways during that intimate and relation-building time of table fellowship to reach out and stay connected. For some, you have a built-in opportunity with those in your household. Listen deeply to one another. For others, as you eat your meal, think of someone you want to reach out to and give them a call. Stay connected with folks on the other end of the phone by voice or visu visually. And remember, each time you ask God's blessing around the table, God has become your guest for the meal. When we do gather together in person again, give some thought to who you found yourself identifying with in the scripture reading today. Are you looking forward to being a host of a wonderful party? Who will you put on the guest list? Are you the servant who goes out to extend the host's invitation? What will you say to compel the guests to come to the party? 
Are you someone who is too busy with your own agenda to accept an invitation and or too uncomfortable with the guest list? Maybe that was you in the past, but remember the invitation is extended over and over and over again. God never gives up on us. Perhaps you feel like one of the marginalized who haven't been invited. Has your sheltering in place and social distancing made you feel marginalized? But now the invitation is for you. When we are able to gather once again at God's invitation, around God's banquet table, will you accept the invitation to come? Will you be the one who personally invites those who are typically not invited to our celebration of the Lord's Day? And if you are someone who has not been invited, I am extending to you personally an invitation to join us around this, the Lord's table. For this is the table where the rich and the poor, those who stand tall and those who are bent and broken, the lame, the blind, the sighted, the deaf, those who hear, the outcast, the sinner, are all seated with equal honor. And you are invited to our celebration and welcomed as friends and equals with the understanding that we will stick by one another at all costs, just as Jesus has stuck by us. So until next week, reach out and touch someone with your phone, of course. Stay healthy, stay safe, and relish the joy and the challenge of each meal giving thanks to God for all the gifts God has provided. And remember always to give thanks to God for the unconditional grace and love of God. Amen. you to join me in professing what we believe 
using the words of the Apostle Creed you'll find, print, you'll find on your screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Will you join me now in prayer? Almighty God, you made the world in all its beauty and wonder. You bless the world with your creativity and with abundance. We give you praise, O oh God, for we have received life from you, a life of abundance because of your generosity. Holy God, as we look around us at your world, help us to see your glory and to be filled with wonder at your power. God, this world that you have created is now unified around a pandemic, a pandemic that is not only infecting people's bodies, but also infecting souls with fear and hardship. People are afraid to gather in community, afraid of getting close to one another, and afraid of illness. And because of that fear, people are suffering. Jobs are lost. Businesses are failing. Food and supplies seem scarce. Because of that fear, people are isolated. Isolated from one another and isolated from the support they need. We are facing challenges, O oh God, but we know that you are with us. We come to worship you today to help us walk through this challenging time. God, we pray for the scientists and the labs working to find a cure or a vaccine. We thank you for their abilities and we pray for you to guide their work. May the right medicine be found quickly and be made available. God, we lift up to you all those who are on the front lines of caring for people. For the doctors and nurses in hospitals, give them health, strength, and the supplies they need. For the caregivers and nurses in nursing homes and retirement centers, keep them healthy with energy to work in the isolation that they face. Be with the firefighters and paramedics and police as they face more challenges and risk their lives to help others. Be with agencies and social workers who are helping those who suddenly find themselves in need. May the resources they need be made available. We thank you for those who work in grocery stores who are working hard to provide the supplies that we need. God, as we face this new situation of living, May we support and help one another. We pray for parents as they take care of their children and keep them safe. God, we pray for our families and friends at this time. Renew and strengthen our relationships. May this time together bring healing to any division and a renewed sense of care and compassion. God, we pray for all those who have contracted COVID-19. We pray for your healing hand to be upon them and be with their families as they walk through this. We pray for all those in our families who are sick and are in need of your healing hand. We pray for Elka Summers, for Onda Hop, and for Bob Walkley. We lift up all of you, all of those on our prayer list, and those we know only in our hearts. We pray for your healing and strengthening hand to be upon each one. God, we pray for this church's mission now in this time. You have called us to show your love, grace, and mercy to a hurting world, to a frightened world. God, in this challenging time, empower us to be the body of Christ. Guide us to help in the best way. Empower us to serve in the way you have called us to. Teach us during this time to love one another as you have loved us, as you have modeled your love for us in the person of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior. And hear us now as we pray together the prayer he taught us, saying, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because God has given you a great banquet, let your thanksgiving overflow with joyous giving for the sake of others. You may mail your contributions to the church or donate through our webpage. pray. God of compassion and generous love, we give you thanks for the riches of earth which sustain our lives and which you have created for our joy. We thank you for Jesus, whose life, death, resurrection, and ascension renews our strength and revives our hope. We give you thanks for the Holy Spirit, who comes among us, invites us to dine with each other and with you, and keeps us in faith. Bless these gifts for the sake of those in need and for the work of your church. In peace, through Jesus the Christ, we pray our thanksgiving. Amen. Our benediction from Philippians, the fourth chapter. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. Do not worry. With thanksgiving, speak to God your needs and the needs of this world. Ponder what is pleasing and excellent. Rejoice always. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We hope you enjoyed a portion of our worship service from First Presbyterian Church of Cheyenne. For more information, please visit our website, firstpreschyenne.org, or call First Presbyterian Church at 307-638-3345. Join us for worship at 220 West 22nd Street in downtown Cheyenne.